Let's say you hit a point in your game where you have to hide some information. So just for example, right? Let's say it's a part and the name of the part is like some sort of password, okay? So let's say this is uh, the password that, you know, the player might eventually need. And I guess because it is a part, let's say uh, the color is also important. I don't know why the color would be important, but let's just say, for example, let's say that the password is important and uh, the color is also important. And let's also say we want to hide this from the player, right? Let's say we don't want this information to just be quickly found and quickly like understood, right? We want this password to be hidden. We want this thing to be hidden until it's our choice to actually show it to the player. And so for this example, let's say, you know, you're a fairly new beginner developer. And so your choice for doing this would just be to take the part and just hide it underneath the floor, just like so, right? Because right now, if I actually run the game, uh, you know, we can't really see the parts, but it still exists. It's still over here. It's just that it's out of sight for the player. And even if I play the game like, as an actual player, like we still can't see it, right? However, the part, you know, presumably still actually exists. And this is where every single, even slightly knowledgeable Roblox developer will say, but byte blocks, aren't you just able to access the workspace and just see the part over here? For those who don't know, the way that Roblox, and not only Roblox, practically every single multiplayer game, the way that these games handle information is that they practically share everything meant to be visible with the player. Because it's like, how am I seeing the spawn location? How am I seeing the base plate? If another player moves, how do I know that that player has moved? How can I see someone else moving just because they pressed some key on their own keyboard? Like, how does that process work? Well, what happens is that us players are called clients, okay? So right now I'm on the client. If I switch to the server, this is the actual game. So for something like movement, if I were to, let's say, walk forward, right, then what I'm doing is I'm giving the server a message saying, hey, listen, I'm pressing this key, which means that I'm supposed to be moving forward. And so then the server just, you know, quickly runs some security checks, makes sure that I'm not hacking or whatever. And then it says, okay, so you're moving. That's great. You're not hacking. And then it sends a message to every single other client saying, hey, listen, this player is supposed to move to this position. Uh, and this animation should be played. And so every other player, because they got that message from the server, will now render your character as if they're moving, which they are. The problem with this approach, though, is that you need to give the client data, right? It's like, how do I know that this spawn location is actually white and not red, right? Like, how does my client know the color? How does my client know what the texture is? Well, my client knows because it has access to all of the items. Like, yes, sure, in a regular Roblox game, you know, Roblox doesn't give you access to all of these items, but you could easily just install some sort of like, but you could easily install a third-party application that just lets you see all of the files that your client has access to. And so in this hypothetical scenario, if I were to be playing your game, and if I had this, you know, thing that allowed me to see files, I would easily be able to see this part and see its color. Now, of course, this is just what my client sees, right? What the client sees and what is actually true aren't always the same. So I'll give you an example, right? I've, I've done this before, but just quickly, let's say if I were to change the color of something like the spawn location, right? If I do it on the server, what the server is going to do is, it, is it's going to send a message to every single player saying, hey, listen, we got this update please update this on your client as well. And so then our client gets that message and says, okay, this is the new color. So then let's update the spawn location to be this new color. But then what happens if I were to change this on my clients? Like what happens if my client decides, okay, you know what? Nah, never mind. This is now red. Well, unless your game explicitly has scripts in place that allows this, well, Clients cannot really communicate with other clients unless the game has code that like specifically allows it. But at that point, that's kind of your issue to deal with. And because of this, this red spawn location will only appear red to us. The actual server still sees it as a blue, you know, cyan spawn location. 
and every single other player, you know, assuming they haven't changed the color of their spawn location as well, will still see it as cyan. No matter how many times I change anything on my clients, it will never replicate to the server unless I write code that specifically allows it to, um, or unless I'm moving, right? Because Roblox obviously needs a system in place to replicate movement to the server, because otherwise you just wouldn't be able to move anywhere. And so then you might be sitting here and just wondering, okay, well, what is the solution here? I mean, if the player can just see anything, how can I hide something from the player, right? If there's some sort of sensitive information um, that I have to hide from people, how do I ensure that an exploiter doesn't actually get in? Well, okay, step number one is you actually don't have to hide this in the workspace. I know a lot of you will be like, duh, obviously, you know, but to those who haven't really scripted before, there's a thing called replicated storage. And what this is, is effectively a storage container for items that doesn't actually show them in the 3D world. So this is just, so as of right now, this is simply raw information, right? So it knows that it's a part, it knows that it's this color, it knows that this is the name, it knows that it's, it should be positioned over here, but it's not a real 3D part, it's simply a thing inside of the storage. And this is a step in the right direction, however, you might notice the name replicated storage. And what replicated means is that it replicates the data to the players. So I am still able, even though not physically, I'm still able to see the data of this part as long as I just know where to look for, which is replicated storage. And this is where we get to the first major point of the video, which is server storage. And this is actually incredibly simple. All I have to do is just take this part, move it inside of server storage, and that is it. Now, if I happen to play the game and let's say I'm like, okay, I need to find something that has a password or whatever, then if I were to open up the workspace, uh, nothing's here, right? Uh, nothing is inside of replicated storage. And guess what? There's nothing inside of server storage. I can even run a check right now. If I want to print, let's say, um, game.serverstoragegetchildren, and to print the number of this, I, I just need to put a hashtag in front of it. If I print the number of children inside of server storage, we will get zero. So our client believes that there is zero items inside of server storage. However, if I switch to the server, look at that. It, it's here. So we have access to it. And if I do the same thing, it prints one. So the server knows that there is an item here, but the client has absolutely zero access to it until we eventually allow it. This is effectively the only way to protect your items from exploiters, right? Anywhere else that you put an item, with the exception of server script service, which I'll get to in a bit, can be and will be seen by exploiters. And you might just be wondering right now, like, okay, but how would we access this item, right? Because like, let's say the player is here, right? How could I show the player um, this item, right? Like, how am I able to actually make sure that the player has access to this item when it's in server storage? And this is where we get to the second part of the video, which is scripts, or in other words, server script service. So just a quick backstory on scripts, right? Because I know all of you need, need it. There are effectively two types of runnable scripts. The first one is a regular server script, and the second one is a local script. A server script will run uh, inside of the workspace, inside of server script service, and maybe also replicated storage, although I, I don't really think that it can, but you know, you can go double check just in case. And what the server script does is it effectively just affects things on the server, right? So it affects how the game perceives things. So for example, let's say if I wanted to get this item inside of a server script, I would be able to. But then if we get to something like a local script, which must be placed either inside of a player or inside of the player's character, well then that local script will only control what the player sees. If inside of the local script, I decide to you know change the color of the spawn location, then it'll change the color for me only and not for other players and not for the server. And likewise, the local script has no access to anything in here. So a server script would not be able to access anything inside of server storage or server script service. And so this is where I get to my point of being able to actually show the player the hidden data. Because what I could do is I could just easily say local hidden part is equal to game 
server storage, wait for child, <laughs> whatever this is. And we can literally just wait, uh, like, I don't know, four seconds. And then we can say hidden parts.parents is equal to workspace. So we can just take this part outside of its secure storage and just move it in the workspace, which the client has access to. So if I just play the game right now real quick, let's see, open up the workspace and there we go. Right now, so as you can see, right now, I have access to this part, and if I check on the server, it is in the workspace and not in the server storage. And this is exactly what server script service is made for. It's a service where I can put a script, and that script will be ran, and the clients will not be able to see how many scripts, they won't be able to open up the script, they just won't be able to see anything inside of this service. And as a matter of fact, you could also put other things in here, like if I really wanted to, I could just hide the part inside of server script service and we would never see it on the client. But obviously for organization purposes, it's just a lot better to keep this stuff inside of the regular storage. And I will also add, so let me just print, I don't know, one or something, that a script will run in, you know, server script service, so it is going to print one. However, it's not going to run inside of server storage. So that's just if you're interested, right? If you need to keep a script somewhere, um, but you know, you don't want it to be ran just yet, server storage is the way to go. And so let me just really quickly showcase why you would actually use this, okay? Let's say we have a door, okay? This is a very, very not good door. Um, I mean, I suppose I could change the color of the door. Like, let me see, Can, do we have wood? Uh, wood planks. I mean, those look like bricks, but okay, let's just let's just assume that this is our door, okay? And I, I'm not going to script the entire functionality, but let's also assume that when I walk up to the door, it needs some sort of passcode, right? And then let's say if I input the correct passcode, then the door will open up and I'll be able to walk through just like so. So that should be fairly easy, right? I'll just place the script inside of the part, or, you know, the door in this case. I'll just say local um, password is equal to um, blah, 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 like so. And then let's just pretend that there's some code here that says if player inputs passcode, then open door. And let, let's just pretend we have a bunch of code here uh, that does that, okay? And it's okay, right? Once again, let's say I'm, you know, I'm playing the game. I'm like, oh damn, this door. Oh no, like it, it requests a password, but like I don't, I don't, I don't know the password because I, I haven't explored the the entire map yet. But I have this third party thing, and let's see if I open up the workspace. Okay, so I, yeah, this is the door. Okay, great. And if I open up the door, is there a script? Oh yes, there is. And if I click on the script, oh interesting. Okay, so this is the password then. Okay, that's that's good to know. And there you go, your entire game is now ruined. As opposed to uh, just taking the script, putting it inside of server script service, you know, like changing up some stuff if you need to. Like, for example, if you need to make a variable for the door, um, before we would just do something like script.parent, because it's inside of the door. But like here, instead of script.parent, you just have to do workspace. You know, and then the name of the door. And that's it. So yeah, like a bit of changes might be required, but that's it. And so now what's going to happen is that, oh, wow, look, a door, interesting. Oh, I, I bet the developer is stupid and, you know, they can't secure their game. And like, oh, what's this? Like, let me see if I look up script. Um, yeah, I can't find any server scripts. That's weird. So I assume that the developer was really intelligent and smart and watched ByteBlocks and bought his course and subscribed to his Instagram, uh, all linked in the description and the pinned comment. And now my... A uh, foolproof plan is not foolproof anymore, and now I don't know the password, and I have to actually play the game. Tragic. And this is great, because on the server, it's right there, right? There we go. So we can see the passcode, but the players cannot. So, if you were confused about this earlier, this is effectively how every single game deals with exploiters. They give every player access to things that, you know, aren't really harmful. Like, for example, like, okay, yeah, you can know the color of the door, you can know that the spawn location is here, those are fine. But then if there's anything that can be exploited, such as a, an important password, or maybe like, let's say, how your code handles, um, you know, like cheat detection, that stuff should only go inside of server uh, services. And you should also only do important calculations on the server, because the player could just slide, right? Like, let's say if you check the password on a local script, the player could easily manipulate the local script to just pretend that the password is correct. But then on a server script, the player can't 
manipulate the server script, right? So the password will always remain consistent no matter what. So every single important check, you know, when it comes to passwords, when it comes to, you know, cash, giving cash, taking away cash, when it comes to game passes, all of that must be done on server script to make the game more secure. And again, like I said, obviously this doesn't mean that you have to use servers for everything, right? The biggest benefit of letting the client have access to things is that the client is able to load them quicker. So let's say you have some parts um, that you don't want to show to the player yet, but it's not like important. Like, I don't know, let's say, let's say you have this part, right? Which like uh, you want to you wanna show to the player later in the game. Well, like, sure, you could place it inside of server storage, but the problem is that the moment you try and actually place the part um, inside of the workspace, then the player would now have to start loading that part, right? And it's just a small part, but in a game, let's say, where you're trying to load, like, a huge amount of items, well, that would just cause a big lag spike for low-end devices. So in, in a case like that, replicated storage would be the answer, right? So like, yeah, okay, sure, exploiters could see what's inside of here, but like, if, if there's nothing important or sensitive here, that doesn't really matter. And what this does is that whenever the player joins the game, th their game will immediately load everything from the start. So then when you actually want to show the player some new parts or some, you know, house or whatever, then there will not be a lag spike because the player's game already loaded that in but it's just not showing it to you yet. So yeah, I do hope that this opened, you know, some some eyes on game development. Um, even if you don't game develop, I just hope you found this interesting. Um, I know this this is a very obvious video to a lot of developers, um, but you know, I see a lot of people still kind of act confused on like how this stuff works. Um, I see a lot more new game developers picking up Roblox and picking up Lua, and that is very good. And like I said before, I made a joke about it, but I do have a course. So if you like my teaching style. Uh, check out the free preview. It's free, no credit card, no sign up, no nothing. Um, in the description and the pinned comment. And do also join the Discord server. It's pretty unhinged at times, or not at times, every time. Um, but we do have like a script or side to the server. So like, if you want script or help, you can find help in the server. And so yeah, you know, leave a comment. Uh, let me know if this helped you or not. Uh, if this, if this didn't help you, and if you absolutely hate the video. Still leave a comment, because engagement is pretty, pretty good. And as always, we are back to basics. Thank you for watching.